Tonight, we're gonna warm things up a bit with a very tropical quilt that gives the illusion of curves with just a little sewing and flipping. So I'm trading my wine in for a more tropical drink and then we'll dive right in. It may be winter in Missouri, but I'm celebrating summer the best way I can with a tropical drink and a very tropical quilt. So this pattern is inspired by the Blue Grotto Cape in Croatia, and it was designed by Shelly Cabana. I mean, Cabana. And if I can't go to Croatia, I might as well pretend I'm there with this beautiful quilt. And it has these beautiful, I can't see what color they are, I'm gonna have to take the glasses off. Oh, that's right, these beautiful ocean blues. And what I'm gonna do is cut this up and make this really cool looking block that looks just like its curved piece. So, better get to cutting. So the first fabric is gonna get cut up, it's this nice blue, they're actually all shades of blue, which is fantastic, it very much fits the theme that we're going for. And there is a lot of pieces to this design. Now, it can be overwhelming at first, it can kinda of make you think, wow, that's a lot, but really, I think, I think it's gonna be okay. I just need to make sure I keep track of everything that I'm doing. So we're gonna cut some squares. I feel like I have everything I need, the lays, the drink, I just need some steel drums playing in the background. You do the best with what you've got. Plus, I can't worry about waking up the kids. That would be awkward to try to explain this. Oh, mommy's just having an illusion, kids. Don't worry about it. And then I'm gonna cut some itty bitty rectangles. Turns out there's an inch and a half marking on these rulers, I didn't even know. Inch and a half by three and a half. So cute. Now the designer has went to all the work to label each of these cuts with a different letter, and there's a lot of different letters in this pattern. So I rated my old scrapbooking cabinet, and I got little letter stickers that I can put right on there. That's gonna be letter A, this is gonna be fabric B, it's gonna help me keep, keep organized after I have a few of those. And then some strips, and I'll be cutting these out with a fun ruler here in a second, and a ruler that I even have a coupon code for you, but hold on, you'll hear about that in a second. We got fabric two, which looks a lot like fabric A. We can tell a little bit of a different color. And these are gonna be F and G. All right, then on to fabric three. Another shade of blue. It's gonna look like a sparkling grotto by the time I'm done. We have our fabric three, which looks awfully similar to that one. I'm pretty proud of myself for remembering where these stickers are at, I have to say. And fabric four. I'll be using a ruler on these in just a moment. You belong there. Ooh, I can't even keep my numbers straight anymore, my letters. Ooh, there we go, I don't know it was harder, cutting all that out or keeping it all straight, but I think I have all the pieces and now I get to cut out my templates out of these strips. So this pattern includes the options to use templates or you can use a Tri-Rex ruler instead. And for me, using a ruler is a no-brainer. It allows me to cut more fabric out quicker and more accurately. And we even have a free shipping code for you in the details below, which you can get your own Tri-Rex ruler shipped to you for free, or really anything you want on the Craftsy website. So with my strips, I'm gonna go ahead and cut out my triangles. I'll just go ahead and use that ruler to straighten up the side, and then I'm gonna line that with the bottom, and then cut. Now what I want to show is what I'm getting here is two different triangles. They're going to be reverse of each other, and I'm going to need to make sure that I do have both of those sides. Now what I've just done is doubled up my fabric, and so every time I cut, I'm actually getting one of each. So if you're not doubling up your fabric, make sure you do that or you're going to get all one direction, which will be very disappointing when it comes time to actually piece your block. So I'm going to continue cutting out of all these strips, get my triangles all lined up, and I'll be ready to finally get piecing the block. Now look at those blues, like the sparkling waters of warm Croatia. Well now, with the gray fabrics, I'm actually gonna use the other ruler to cut out the A templates, and that's a differently shaped triangle. So I'm gonna line that up and then carefully cut on both sides. I can hear every lesson I've ever taught, don't cut towards yourself, but it's better to do as I say and not as I do, right? Once I'm done, I'll have a billion little pieces, and then I'm gonna put it together in a beautiful quilt. 
This pattern uses a stitch and flip technique, and the designer said she used this because it has less seams and looks better, even though it uses just a little bit more fabric, and hey, I am totally fine with that. So the first part of this block is gonna use these strips. So it's gonna start with a gray rectangle, and then a blue rectangle, and I'm gonna lay it on there directly like this. And I'm gonna draw a line from corner to corner, and that's gonna be the line that I sew on. Before I can flip, I need to stitch. I'm gonna sew right on that line. A quick trim. Basically, I'm gonna trim just about a quarter inch outside of that line I just sewed. I'm going to flip, and you're gonna see the first part of that block. Nice diagonal line. I'm just gonna finger press it in place and get my next one and do the same thing on the other side. Mark it out, and then sew again. And then pull back. And there's the first part to my block, the two different colors of blue, that gray triangle. I'm gonna give that a press, and then I'm gonna do the same thing with different colors. The next part of my block is gonna use these cute little gray triangles that I cut out earlier, and one of them is going to get these little guys on there, and that one. Looks practically the same, but trust me, they're not. Now when it comes to sewing these triangles together, what I'm gonna do is lay them right sides together, and I'm gonna remember that this point is gonna extend just a little bit past there, about a quarter inch or so. That way when I sew it and fold it over, it should make them fairly even. Quick little finger press, and then I'm gonna add the next color on the other side. Now it's the moment of truth. It all centers on this. I hope it comes out okay. I know that the darker sides here are gonna face down. It's gonna go on the top. And I think that's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna assemble this middle row and sew those together. Well, that might take a little stretchy stretch. Cute. I think it's gonna work. There we go. One more seam left. Well, it may not be the best block ever, but I'm gonna go ahead and press that nice and flat and make some more of these. As you can see, there's a lot of seams in this block, and look how nice those two points match up perfectly. I mean, we're not gonna talk about these two down here, because they don't really even count. No, I'm just kidding. They're not perfect, but trust me, I'm not ripping it out. I don't have time for that. But I am gonna take a moment and carefully press it. Since there are so many seams, when it comes time to the quilting process, I want these seams to be nice and flat so that it makes it easier for the machine quilting. Looks pretty good. Well, I'm gonna make a few more of those and I'll be back to show you how this block comes together. So there's that first block that I made. I made a second one just like it, and I made two more, and they look very similar, but trust me, they're just a little bit different. This color right here is switched. This is going to form part of my star, or my flower. I'm gonna call it a flower. Part of the grotto effect. Then, using that same stitch and flip technique, I've made the corner pieces. So I'm gonna align those, and then the blue. In the blue. Now this is really where we get to see that curved illusion starting to happen and I'm loving how that looks but I'm missing something and that's the center of my grotto block. Good thing I just so happen to have the pieces right here. Now there's that main square and of course these little guys you've already seen how that happens how those go together. I'm just gonna sew the smaller ones on top the bigger ones on the sides and then I'll have all the blocks for my grotto. There is the center to my block. Now I'm gonna sew them into rows and sew the rows together. There's the first finished block. It looks fantastic. Now this quilt has 20 blocks, so I gotta make 19 more of these. I'm gonna top off my drink and I'll see you when I'm done. All right, I have a few of the blocks done. There's that first one. And the second one is very much the same. The only difference is a little bit of a different color placement and the center block is different as well. What I have to remember is that these similar colors are gonna go right next to each other. 
and this curve that's coming out, oh my goodness, is gonna be so fun to quilt. Well, I'm gonna get these pieced together and I'll have my first row finished. And a second row looks just as good as the first. Look at the secondary block that's coming out. Even more of that curved illusion, which still is just done with straight lines. Oh, I can't wait to quilt it. The center of this grotto quilt is finished. I just need to add a couple of strips for the border. And these bright, beautiful blues are gonna go around all four sides, and then it's time to quilt. When it comes to quilting, a quilt as intricate as this, I really wanna make sure I highlight all that beautiful curved piecing. So what I'm gonna do is a version of quilting which I like to call up all night. Now don't worry, I have free quilting diagrams that shows you how to do this and the turn in early version which is a nice easier quilting option. You can find out how to download both of those in the description box below. But make sure you subscribe while you're at it so that you don't miss any of these machine quilting tips. Now as I'm working on this block, I'm gonna stabilize as I go. So what that means is I'm gonna do a little stitching in the ditch. I'm gonna start by stitching along the seams using my ruler and then fill it in with my free motion quilting. So I can't wait to get started with that. To help keep my lines nice and straight, I'm gonna go ahead and use a ruler and I have my ruler foot on the machine that's just gonna keep my ruler from sliding over the foot and into the needle. And I'm gonna position it where I wanna quilt and just use that to help keep it nice and along that seam. So now that I've stitched along those seams, or got it as close as I can, remember it doesn't have to be perfect, I'm gonna go ahead and fill in with some free motion quilting. Now the reason I stitch in the seams first is it helps hold all those bulky seams down, hopefully it makes the free motion quilting process just a little easier. I'm gonna do the same thing in this little triangle by stitching along the seams and filling it in. Now I'm gonna go ahead and work in this blue part of the block, which is gonna look great because that thread's gonna show up just a little and really kinda use that quilting to enhance it. But since I need to get to this point, I'm gonna use that stitching in the ditch just to travel where I need to go. That's one reason why I love doing it so very much. Now since I have grottos and tropical themes on my mind, I thought it would be fun to quilt some palm fronds or some ferny looking designs in this block. And what I've done is quilted a serpentine line that fills in half of this blue shape. And that line just kinda curves out into a point and then I'm gonna echo my way back, filling in that half of the block. Now serpentine lines can be a little tricky, so make sure you download those free quilting diagrams so that you can trace over it and see how that goes. But then once I'm done with that half, I have to do the other side, so I'm gonna travel along and do the same thing on the other side. And the result, I think, is a very tropical, easy, quick to quilt design that I think is gonna look fantastic on the quilt. In this gray shape, basically what I'm doing is using points along the outside of the block as a reference to quilt this feathery, flowery kind of shape. So starting from one point of my star, I'm gonna quilt a line that curves in towards the inside of my block to this point right here. And this is actually gonna be where all those curves come back to until I'm ready to move on. From this point, I'm gonna curve out to my next point on my block and curve back. Now let me tell you, I'm not worried about these curves being perfect or that's super symmetrical, I'm just trying to get this block quilted fast. Now what's awesome about this kind of design is that I'm gonna end up on the opposite side from where I started, which is perfect for this kind of block because I can work my way around that whole outside and return to where I started. Well, there's a lot of little pieces in here I'm gonna quilt, so I'm gonna get this finished, but I'll show you what it looks like in just a few. It's been a great tropical time working on the grotto quilt. I love the curved illusion without the curved piecing. I got to throw away those templates and pull out the rulers and the machine quilting with the palm fronds just made me feel like I was on a tropical paradise. Now, I can't give you a free vacation, but I can give you a free coupon code for free shipping on your next purchase from Craftsy. So be sure to check that out in the description box below and make sure you subscribe. You don't wanna miss any of these Midnight Quilt Show episodes. Now it's time for me to catch some rays or catch some Z's, whichever comes first.